Welcome back to Everything Money. We're certainly glad you joined us again. As always, we're here with Seth, Paul, and Mo, analyzing stocks, talking business, more real estate this year. Today, we're talking about Dave and Busters. Was that you, Paul? Yeah. <laughs> Today, we're talking about Dave and Busters. Now, everybody loves this place, Paul. I mean, I you go, been here you years. take the kids, you got the video games, you got the beer. I mean, they were, were they the first ones to mix like young kid video games and then beer for mom and dad while we're waiting. Anyway, I just love this. My kids love to play all the games. They got 140 locations across the US and Canada. And obviously, they got slaughtered last year. They had, in their five-year chart, their stock was up $68, $70. Last year in COVID, it was down to $7. $7. $7. Now it's at 42 It's bounced back, yeah, for almost 45 today. We, we, want, we want to go over the eight pillars, use our eight-pillar analysis to take a look at this company. However, Paul, you're going to spoil us with sometimes the eight pillars don't work, and this might be very well the case. I welcome in Paul Gabriel. Go ahead. Guys, look at this eight-pillar thing here. New boy. Now... This is exactly what we talk about when we say, understand what you're looking at. When people tell me, Paul, you only care about the numbers. If I only care about the numbers, I'd avoid the stock. I'm ignoring all these eight pillars completely, and here's why. This is all because of COVID. I'm sure when we look at their revenue, it's dropped 60, 70% in the last year. I'm not worried about that right now. I'm gonna go look at the company and say, okay, when they get back to normal, what do I think they're worth? It's like CCL, Carnival Cruise Line. Carnival Cruise Line's eight pillars are garbage, but when they're back to normal, I'm a buyer of Carnival Cruise Line because I think they get back to $40, $50, $60 a share, and they're currently in the 20s. Do you want to look at their revenue like compared to market cap? So let's go look at it right now. Ready? Income statement. Oh, look at this. 746 to 1.35, and then went down to 436. So this is about a 60% drop in revenue, but they had increasing revenue. Now, with all locations that are driven, where revenue is driven by locations, you want to see how much of this revenue growth is from new openings versus same store growth. By that, I mean any retail location or things like this, you're going to sit there and say, okay, did they increase their revenue a lot because they just opened more stores or because people in the current existing stores were going back to the stores and spending more money? It's called same store sales. That's a very important aspect to any sort of retail business. Even though this is entertainment, it's entertainment with a retail aspect to it, right? Because you have to go to a physical location to have fun. So go make sure that the actual same store sales were increasing. I think for a company like Damon Busters, you're going to want to go back and look at several years with the data. Make sure their same store sales were increasing. Let's go to the profit. Net income. 7.6, 60, 90, 120, wow. 120, 100. Then they dropped to negative 207. Again, I'm ignoring this completely. Okay, so they had increases. Again, this is awesome. This is wonderful. One of the things I want to look at last year during the downturn, what did companies do a lot of to, to get cash? Sold shares. Sold shares. So it'd be interesting to see how their shares went. And look at this, guys. They were at 41.55, 42, 40.5, 38, 30, 47. So they did issue a lot of shares to raise capital. Carnival Cruise Line did the same thing. A lot of people did that instead of taking on debt. It, it made sense. I understand why they did that. Um, I'm not going to punish them so much for that one. It's something to still consider, but I'm not as upset about it because I'd rather them take the cash from willing investors who believe in the long term. Right at such an extreme number. Now, right. granted, they are issuing shares at a quote-unquote low valuation, but it is something to consider. Go back to revenue. This is, situation. This, is, uh, this is incredible, Paul. We just did a video on BNGO, which is a very talked about stock. And th these two companies have similar market caps of $2 billion. BNGO did $10 million last year. Even Dave & Buster's in the tank <laughs> did $460 million in revenue. Yeah, and then this is the quarterly numbers, Seth. So look at this, quarterly. These are the quarterly numbers. And then plummet. Plummet. Now it's starting to rebound. So it'll be interesting to see how did this, how did this new quarter do, which actually we should have a data on that new quarter by now. Um, it'll be updated here shortly. But the whole point is, how did they do? Let's look at their profit numbers by quarter. They're still losing money every single quarter, but I'm sure that's going to turn around at some point. Okay, so these are the things that you have to consider when going forward with these companies is realizing that not everything is going to be with because of COVID, this is a this is a permanent problem. It's still like if you think about Dave and Buster's from a long term perspective. Kids are playing video games at home, right? Mm -hmm. But like you said, yeah. parents don't want to sit at home with their kids playing video games. They want to go out. Guys, let's go out, let's have pizza. 
The food in Dave & Buster's is actually pretty good. We once had a company party there. It's fun, you can have beers, you can have food, the kids can play the games, you can play the games. It's a wonderful, I actually enjoy the experience very much, right? So I do think that as the internet age gets more and more and people are spending more time at home playing video games, I still think there'll be an extra benefit to going out with the family as a family event, like a sporting event. You go out, and this is probably way cheaper than a sporting event to go to, right? Mm-hmm. For sure. I mean, well, yeah, well, and you get, it seems like you get something in return when you give them your tickets and you get yeah. some kind of toy. You get some Chotsky toy that costs them 14 cents and you spend $87 yeah. on tickets. Feels for, a right? little better. But it feels fun. That's the point of it. All right, balance sheet. Cash on hand, about 118 million. Current liabilities, 271. Ouchers. Now let's see the past. Is that pretty typical for them? Actually, it's pretty typical for them. They tend to have a pretty low number there. Yeah, so that's it's an X, which is pretty typical for them anyhow. What about free cash flow in the past? So let's look at this free cash flow number. Now, guys, one of the most common comments I get from people on our Patreon is, thank you so much for giving me the free cash flow number. We're making the software so you do as little calculating as possible. Just input your numbers. It'll spit out what you want. So this free cash flow number I added here, it's cash from operations, less capital expenditures, free cash flow right here. Now, 24, 50, 45, 121, 60, 132. So let's say the average here is about, what is that? 50, 60 million bucks, mm-hmm. call it 60 million times 20 is 1.2 billion. Can somebody tell me what the market cap of- uh, 2.1 billion currently. So it's still high. I still think even based on their stabilized numbers, I'm not buying Dave & Buster's because they still have some, to get out of some problems here, they still have some negative cash flow to probably get through, um, but it's still selling for a really high number based on free cash flow. So I'm gonna be passing on Dave & Buster's anyhow at this price. Um, even if it was half the price, I'd say, well, there's still some issues to get through. So these are the things to consider, but I would ignore last year's number just consider last year's numbers as how they still, have, they still have to dig themselves out of a hole for now to get to get back to stabilized cash flow. Well, were people trading David Buster's in the bid and ask nation? You know, this is their this is the high from the last year, um, but right now it's it's coming it's below the sweet spot. But the red line is on top of the yellow, and it's starting to make its move towards the sweet spot. So if you do get green engulfing candlesticks like so, I mean, this thing can definitely make some kind of run, especially with people going back out. Into, uh, into the world much more. So if they can really break out above this $51, $52 resistance point, whatever that previous all-time high was from uh, March, they can do something. So you can go to the top of the, of the actual um, needle. Yeah, and the reason is, this is where the stock price got to that day. So it got to this point and then it sold back off and they closed right down here. So that point is where people just started taking their profits. So I have to think the next time it gets up to that level, People are going to see that and say, it's just a psychological thing. They go and they sell because they think that there's not going to be enough volume to push it through that all-time high. Okay. Even though it was just intraday. Final take on Dave & Buster's, you guys. What do you think, Paul? I'm passing. Um, I think that once it, I think it's the excitement of re- reopening, which, by yeah. the way, is super exciting that we reopened. And I don't have to go anywhere with tons of you know, 18 masks on yeah. and things like that. But I think it's just been hyped because of the reopening. It's another example of people not looking at financials, just going, oh, we're reopening. What's going op- to be amazing when we open? Dave & Buster's, let's go buy the stock. And it's just been a big drive up. I just think it's, it's an overreaction on the high side. Speaking of financials, earnings is this Thursday. So you'll get those quarterly numbers that are going to come out. And we'll analyze it again from there. So this beautiful software behind Paul here that Paul's clicking around. This is the Everything Money software. This is what you get as a part of our Patreon. Uh, Paul, we, we talk about it all the time. We had, a, we had a very humble goal of maybe 750 patrons this 725. year. 725. And uh, we're at close to 3,000? No, we're over 3,000. Over 3,000 We're close patrons. to 3,100 now. And, uh, and people are using the software to do, on a daily basis to, uh, to check their stocks, the real estate calculator. I'm sorry, the, the retirement, retirement calculator. calculator. The real estate calculator is coming soon. The app is coming this year. You'll be able to do it on your phone. I think once the app comes out, people will be even using it even more. Our goal is to make the software easy for you to understand financial data on a company. It'll be easy for you to say, here's what I'm looking for. What do I need to find? Um, can I make some comment really quick? Go ahead. Seth, look at this. Imagine it's 2017 and we're in June and we have the show, which we didn't have the show back then. And I sat there and said, guys, I don't think the stock is worth it. What would you have said to me? Paul, there's no way it's going, but guess what? Within a year and a half, it had been cut in half. Wow. Year and a half. These things do happen, guys. These things do happen. They absolutely do happen. Then it rebounded a bit. Then it cut in half again. Then it fell. I mean... 
don't, your job as an investor is to find the companies that fit your criteria out of 10,000 companies out there. We're adding foreign stocks soon. You're gonna have international exchanges. So you'll have plenty of opportunity to find other stocks. That is your goal as an investor. It's not to force a play, it's to find the plays that work for you and then buy them, right? Yeah, that's a great way to put it. That's a take on Dave and Buster's. We'll see you there. We'll see Paul and I, see Paul and I at the pool table and Mo and I playing Fruit Ninja. I hate shooting playing basketball. pool. Oh, really? I like just the uh, the, the basketball. Basketball, I do love basketball. That's the only one I play. And it's literally, I just, sit in front of, I just sit in front of there and just go. And whack-a-mole. Whack, I don't even do that. Whack-a-mole? That one's fun. Oh, please. What are you, four? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Fondle the thumbs up on the way out. And join the Patreon because it's awesome. I'll put it up against any other Patreon page. It's ridiculous, the stuff that we give you. That's our take. Love you guys. See you.